Okie doke. Got it. I said got it. So we have uh, here Alejandro, who went through our process at UCA this year. Um, we're very excited to talk to him. Um, so Alejandro, you had some good results with UCA this year. Um, where are you headed to school next year? I'm going to be headed to University of Chicago. Uh, it was a tough decision. I got into a lot of great places. I got into Brown University. I got into Georgetown as well. Um, University of Michigan. I got wait lists on Dartmouth and Vanderbilt. And I committed to Chicago before the wait lists were sort of decided. So I stopped paying attention to that, but I could have gotten into those as well. I think there was a possibility if I, if I, kept on it but by then i was like ah i just want to finish this up be done with it chicago yeah right well it's a great place to be chicago so we're excited yeah. for you and we're very happy that we were able to be part of that kind well, of thank journey. you yeah no worries um so if we think back to like oof, last year <laughs> rewind right if we rewind it's a very last long year. year right it's really been a long, long year for very different reasons right yeah the new normal. Um, what, what initially brought you to UCA? Well, so I, I just wanted, well, first of all, uh, I had a conversation with my parents about all this. And, and it's a conversation that's been happening for a few years beforehand. And basically what was said consistently was, I really, really want to maximize my opportunities. And it's something that I've been working on really since I came in from kindergarten, just studying on making sure the academics are the best and I can make them. But at a certain point, I look at some articles and my parents do as well about how a lot of the myths about college admissions just aren't true with sort of like your individual profile and, and character and essays and all that being more important. So I realized that this is something I have no idea about. And we all agreed on this. So at the time, I already had SATs done. I had a great GPA. I had a lot of AP courses. But I realized a whole lot of people have that too. So that's when I think we went to UCA to just take that next step to really be able to get my profile right so I can have my best chances at an elite institution for college. That sounds great. That sounds great. So if we drill down a little, um, no without getting in too much of the weeds, but yeah. what were some of the worries that you had um, upon signing up? Upon signing up? Well, upon signing up, I was a little bit skeptical because mm -hmm. I, you know, there, there was uh, the essays and all that. And, and I, I heard about the outline and the speed draft. And I was like, my speed draft? I didn't think that this was how you would write an essay, but as time went on, really, I, I came to appreciate it a whole lot more very grateful for it now and I understand I understand sorry I understand the whole process now with the speed draft sort of capturing the voice of the writer mm -hmm. and all that right now I think there was a lot of wisdom in it that as a student applying and a very stubborn student applying I didn't understand at the first glance but seeing the results I got and seeing my progression as a writer uh, especially for a lot of these essays I had to write for my personal statement, understanding sort of what I should communicate about myself and my character. The initial words do not matter. I think the final words matter, and the final words are that this was a very good choice. Sounds good. And were yeah. there any parts of the process that surprised you? Well, hmm. So, I think what surprised me a lot was just the workload involved. I didn't expect it to be so much. Um, obviously, you know, as a high school student, I have heard from the seniors beforehand uh, about how it's a minefield. So many essays to handle and that the majority of people in my high school, at least, were applying to about five state schools and they were complaining a lot. But you know, I was always going forward like, nah, it won't be that bad. It won't be that bad. But here with UCA, there were very high quality expectations and they really pushed me. Well, you guys really pushed me uh, 
to just get it right. If I'm not getting it right, you're going to have to write it again. And obviously, you know, with, with so much work, I get frustrated. Oh, man, come on. This is too much. But you guys were right. You guys were right. That really surprised me a whole lot of time. And people who want to succeed really have to put in the work. But it's work that you're going to reap once decisions come out in June. Well, not in June. When, when do decisions come out again? They were in, yes. in May. Right. In May. Yeah, in May. <laughs> so, you know, you, you read Unless what, you get you a likely letter. Unless you get a likely letter, like somebody we know. Right. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so you kind of described maybe, uh, can you describe some challenges that you experienced in that process? I think you kind of described it a little, but like, what were some of your own personal challenges during that process? Okay, so the challenges, uh, one thing that I remember uh, very specifically was that sort of my whole perspective on what I would do uh, for these essays was turned on its head. So at first I was thinking like, oh, I'm going to make some really formal thing that makes me seem like an academic and whatever. And they're going to be like, wow, this kid is so mature. You know, let's, let's admit it to him to our university. Uh, but with UCA, with the people, they, they told me the truth. They told me, listen, so many smart people out there, so many mature academic kids. And, you know, you, you can't really try to be the best at that. You have to be the best at your own thing. And the, the focus on the essays, instead of looking like some sort of intellectual that you think they will want, instead, instead you just communicate your own character in an honest way, in a way that uh, I think they would appreciate much more because then they understand the person that's, that's trying to be admitted and all that. And surprised me, at least. I was, I was kind of like, hmm, that's weird at first. You guys were right again, though. <laughs> same, same story. <laughs> that makes sense. It seems like there was some growth there. Um, what about, and I think you talked about this a little, about the balancing the process of like you going through your senior year, but then balancing the admissions process with it, where there's some, I mean, challenges again with regard to that or that balancing act. What was that like? Oh, yeah, that was, that was tough. I took a whole lot of AP classes. Uh, Oh, no, not seven. I took, I took nine AP classes in my senior year because some, some of them were semesters. Uh, and that was brutal, coupled with applying to a very large number of universities, which the better ones usually, like the better they are, the more essays they ask for, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I guess, because they, you get to show them who you are and differentiate yourself. But it's not something you feel at the time. I think it's useful to sort of avoid the pitfall because I resisted it. I sort of Did we went you? through it, just got for, I basically, this was my perspective for the entirety of senior year. Sleep is optional. So I, think I, had a I, I got my work with done with you about that. <laughs> I got my work done and I was like, all right, we're going to get this college stuff done and we're going to concentrate on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's not, I don't think it's something that's healthy or something that a lot of people can sort of resist through for like a full calendar year because that's brutal. One thing that I think was what saved me was the summer beforehand, I started sort of making outlines for the ideas I had for essays for certain universities. And then when I had to write the essays, when uh, time came up with you guys, then I was ready. Then I already had ideas about what I was going to do for each one. And then that way I saved a whole lot of time. But for someone who is past that stage, I think that's a very good thing to do beforehand. If you're going to be applying double digits to uh, prestigious universities, I definitely recommend that summer beforehand, get working on that. Uh, but did you, feel, did you feel good knowing that your personal statement was done even before your other essays had to? Be yeah, done. I felt great. I felt I asked my friends and I was ahead of all of them. So yes. But that's the point. I recommend <laughs> straying away from overloading yourself on school for your senior year because really, at least from my understanding, what really matters is the first semester of senior year. 
And the second semester, by then, you have your college decisions. It's more just don't do anything crazy and keep don't up the good problem. work in the classroom. Don't don't like start failing your classes. Right. Uh, really, I, I think junior year is what matters most. So if you're going to load up, I think junior year is the time to do it personally, because that's what I did. But then I was, ah, I'm doubling down even right. more yeah. senior year. That was a mistake. Though, I think we had a couple of moments where we talked about that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and yet you were still a little, a little resistant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, what did you learn most about yourself during this process? That's a good question. Because um, I feel like part of this is the admissions process, but part of this is almost the coaching process, too, that goes through it, right? That's like, true. That's true. There is a lot of advising on the personal side to really go through this whole process it's really stressful and different for everyone uh in my case i think i learned that i have to let go of my stubbornness and my perfectionism in a lot of cases because that gets in the way and you can't be superhuman and do everything like i was trying to do just take all these classes apply to so many universities in most cases, something has to give. And you need to focus on what is your priority? Do you want to graduate with the highest GPA or do you want to be the person in your class that gets into the best university and or the best university for you, really? Whatever you want to go for. That I think, fit, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like Harvard may not be the best fit for you. Something may be better for you. And I think that's the objective. From senior year onwards, I think it's very important to sort of regiment it. And it's something I didn't really do that much, although I was blessed by the, the work I did the summer before, to really just beforehand have an idea in your head, what is my priority? What do I want to be the state that I'm in when this year is over? Like, what, what do I want to have? And if that means, that you want to get into a certain university or a certain group of universities, then I think that you really need to focus on that. And I was stubborn. I, I was like, I'm going to succeed in everything. But it was an incredibly stressful time. And I, I recommend that it's something that you avoid. Okay. And did you have any interviews? And uh, how did interview prep help you with those? Interview prep was great, actually. I really enjoyed it. It sort of helped me communicate myself more I don't know more more calmly usually these these events are something that's going to make me prone to stress out a bit and get worried like oh did I say this right and the interview prep really gave me a better perspective with this you know uh it's in a sense similar to Essex and what I'm trying to do here is just communicate myself honestly to the person that's interviewing me so that they understand who I am and they decide if I'm a good fit for their university or not. And that way, if they decide that I am, I probably am a good fit. I don't think that it's a good idea to be faking a lot of things. And that's something I learned in the prep process about how to be genuine about myself and how to present myself in a way that's you know, appealing and all that. So I, I think it was a good process. I think I did quite well in the interviews, thankfully. That makes sense because I remember you having a Tulane interview mm -hmm. uh, initially. That was kind of your litmus test. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Okay, great. And then um, what are you looking forward to next year or this year that's coming? Next year, I'm looking forward to going to college, to be honest. That's going to be so nervous. Well, so nervousness inducing, but also in a good way, like in the, in the bad and the good way. I, I'm looking forward to it. I have some anxiety because I'm, I'm not going to be with my parents anymore. I'm moving, what, like a thousand miles uh, from where I'm living now. It's going to be a very different experience for me. But that's also a very good thing. I'm very excited to see where that takes me. I think it's going to be great honestly sometimes i get worried oh it's gonna be oh it's gonna be so weird i'm scared 
but we all, we all have those feelings yeah we all have those yeah. moments and i think it's something a lot of people go through i'm really excited to do it because every time i hear about it like, it was a transformative experience i think it will be in my case too. so that's what i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to making new friends uh sort of exploring the city of chicago and and just uh i don't know making snow snowmen i guess it's gonna be something I'll be doing a lot <laughs> sounds, of. Over that sounds good. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about fit, how important is fit? Fit, to be honest, with with universities, it's not just a university. It's not just a brand that you're gonna have stamped on you. It's a place you're gonna be living there for four years, and that in 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 many cases. I know there's people that say, oh, I will rent an apartment outside of campus, but that's not a possibility for a lot of universities. A lot of times you have to live on campus for a certain amount of years. And there are a lot of universities that have strict policies about that. So I just want people to imagine how they would feel being in a place they don't belong in. Because I, I do think that these universities are big enough that you'll find people like you, but they should keep in mind that they're gonna be living here for four years. So it ought to be a, a school culture that they agree with, that they feel that they can flourish in, that they can learn in, that they can be exposed to new things in. Uh, so I, I think school fit is incredibly important. Okay, great. Um, so knowing your outcomes and what you went through with the process and the growth that you went through, would you recommend UCA to other people? Yes. And why? Yes. Why? Because I was wrong. Because I, I was wrong about my whole perspective and UCA showed me uh, everything that I know now uh, about the college admissions process. And, and I, I, I get kind of excited to be honest. I'm very obnoxious because whenever <laughs> I hear I hear my junior friends, and I have a friend who's a sophomore as well, they start talking about college and they're like, ooh, I don't know. I'm kind of confused. What should I do with SATs? I feel like I'm the expert because of UCA. So I go and I tell them, oh, this is what you have to do. Oh, this is, you know, I, I give out all the knowledge and they're like, wow, look at this guy. You know, I don't know if it's in a good way or a bad way, but they seem they seem pleasantly surprised with all the things that I know. And I think I have recommended UCA to a few people. I know a friend of mine was also involved with it. Um, Matthew, I don't know if you know him. He was with another um, editor, advisor. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So now you can would be recommend one it. of our it was a great experience. <laughs> now you could be one of our ambassadors moving forward. Um, since we're kind of forming this community of people. I mean, we have already, um, but we're fortifying sort of what that post UCA experience will be like in terms of community. So it's great to see the energy that you have around this and that, you know, you're talking to other people about the benefits that you can get through this whole process, because I think that, you know, there's a lot of growth that happens, not only process, you know, it's not only keeping you in a timeline in the process and helping you understand all those parts and then giving you the sort of insights to understand the information and all the information out there, but you're also growing as a person during this process and having a better outcome as a result that you wouldn't have had otherwise, right? Um, is there anything else that you would add about the UCA experience that you thought was important or anything else? Hmm. I would recommend reading the monthly webinars. They were very informative. And I didn't tell him to say that, but that's it's awesome. Easy, it's easy to tune out, to be honest. Uh, I, in my experience, there was a while, I'm so busy, I tune out, and my parents were like, the new webinar just came out, have a look at it. And I would look at it, and it's really easy to sort of lose your uh, will to succeed or will your determination and all that and your motivation and the monthly reminders to see what uh, Bob says, which is not really always in reference to what you have to do with your essays. A lot of times it's some advice for how you should handle the mental stresses of the process and how your family should handle it. I think it's, it's something that kind of rejuvenates your strength a little bit because this is an endurance test. And that's the reality of it. It's not 
something that is very fun, I guess, because the, the essays are fun to write when you write like the first 10, but then when you write like the, the 40th one, you're like, oh man, come on. Right. But the, the, the monthly is, webinars, they're very example. important. Yeah. They, yeah. they sort of like recover your stamina and they keep, they keep you on track pretty much. We're happy to. So that's my recommendation. That. That's my word of advice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alejandro, for your time today um, and sharing your experience with UCA. We're very excited about you and your new experiences and new adventures at the University of Chicago for next year. Thank you. Thank you. It's Thanks. a very tough process, but at the end of the day, you really enjoy it. Well, thank you. Thanks.